Like their neurotypical peers, women with autism can learn to live independently, build careers, start a business, and more. Researchers say women with autistic spectrum condition can be a huge asset to a workplace due to their capacity to solve problems and their direct approach to communication. However, understanding their needs is key to their success. Hello everyone and welcome to Our Voices. I am Semenyu Sheikh Oye and I'm joined by my co-host Oriani Tangishaka and Anastasi Tudieshe. Hello. Today we will talk about what success means to an autistic woman. And we are having something blue in our outfit to mark the autism <laughs> months, right? awareness months. You succeeded. You succeeded. <laughs> we <I did>. tried. <laughs> tried. <laughs> well, unfortunately, mm. many African children with autism are hidden away mm -hmm. and mostly and uh, they are not even uh, diagnosed. And I even have talked to mothers who told me that their children are possessed with evil spirit. Mm -hmm. What is it like in your communities? Uh, same thing in m most of African communities it's n not something that's talked about unless you're talking about somebody being bewitched but you know in adult autism I don't know much about them because I don't see them in our common environments you know adults with autism it's something that you don't we really don't talk about because we don't see them uh, in our jobs in our uh, schools and things like that so you know we've known uh, uh, autism in children because of so much resources that's been put in there in the academia in the awareness in the uh, treatment of autism so the question is, how can we uh, accommodate them in our adult environments? How can we support them? How can we help, help them thrive by identifying them mm -hmm. that they are amongst us, the, the few that are amongst us? So I'm very interested in some of what you have Having prepared um, as the lead host today and seeing you know, more and more and learn more and more mm -hmm. about it. What is Absolutely. It? And I, to add to what Oriane was saying, uh, in your introduction, you know, you were talking about children. It reminded me of when I was uh, still a correspondent for VOA in DRC, in Kinshasa. And I met that nun who used to, uh, run, uh, to run a facility, dedicated um, mental health facility for children. And um, some of the children were on a very, uh, were uh, autistic and on the severe part of the spectrum yeah. and she would share with me sh her and her team would share with me horrible stories mm. of children being held in captivity yeah. in their own homes in uh, they would never see the light of the day they would be kept in a room fed in the room mm. sometimes tied wow. to make sure that they don't leave yeah. the room yeah. and um, also yes considered uh, bewitched yeah mm. exactly I mean that's the story of many children oh, with yes. autism and that explains to Orient's curiosity to why we don't see many of these, ch these children as young adults especially in African society Absolutely. because these children are hidden away hidden. or mm -hmm. not given the chance or the resources but worldwide you know we have have all these famous people mm -hmm. with autism mm -hmm. like Albert Einstein or Charles Darwin mm -hmm. or you know who use their ability and the skills to accomplish Elon right Musk. Elon Musk Bill Gates mm -hmm. uh, even from our current times right. and uh, so I guess autism comes in different shades different spectrums exactly. different because it's in a spectrum mm -hmm. and uh, people with autism because they have different levels of severity mm -hmm. and they, the need they have is also you know different, different. Mm -hmm. and the success they exhibit also can be different and this is with what we are going to be talking about today According to the World Health Organization, about one in 100 children are diagnosed with autism spectrum disorder around the world. This is an increase from the global report a decade ago, which found that 62 in 10,000 children were autistic. In addition, research research, as reported by New York Times, have shown that the proportion of girls diagnosed with autism has grown significantly and more women are diagnosed in adulthood. However, as the number of people diagnosed with autism keeps growing, so does the unemployment rate. According to World Economic Forum, 85% of people with autism in the United States are unemployed. This number goes to 90% in Nigeria. Nevertheless, research indicates that people with autism have high functioning abilities and with the right resources and support, their strengths and abilities can be used to achieve success. As the world marks April as Autism Awareness Month, this week's edition of Our Voices will ask why autistic women are overlooked and what success means to them. Mm. 
Well, let's start the discussion by listening to uh, Ke uh, Rosemary Kuru, a Kenyan mother whose son was diagnosed with autism when he was two years old. She says as a mother, it was uh, initially difficult for her to find out what was wrong with her child. Let's take a look. Autism is a hidden disability. Sometimes you don't know what is wrong with your child, but you can see something that is not right. And for us, it took us uh, about two years to get the diagnosis right. When my son was uh, young, he was not verbal. And so sometimes even trying to find out where his discomfort is coming out uh, from was a problem. He learned to express himself and thank God he learned to use language for communication. That made his life easier. He became more independent and more able to interact with the members of the family. Thank you so much, Rosemary, for sharing your experience. So mm -hmm. And exactly, and this is um, what mothers and families go through when it comes to finding out uh, for early intervention. Mm -hmm. We now have Ayo Sokale live on Skype. Sokale is a chartered civil engineer who has masters in civil and coastal engineering from uh, Plymouth University. She also has a talent for dance, drama, and singing that took her to theater stage. She was uh, diagnosed with autism at late, later in adulthood, but she says it doesn't stop you from reaching your potential and being a productive member of society. Ms. Okale, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. And absolutely, I do think that you can be autistic and have a meaningful life. It's all about being considered and having accommodations when you require it. Mm -hmm. But it's not something that is going to stop you from living a life if there's the adequate support, if you have high support needs, and people acknowledge that and consider that. And I think as we're getting more and more awareness, we're going to have more and more diagnosis of younger people with autism. And this is going to be great because they're going to have support sooner rather than later. That's and that's great. really an important part of this. That's very interesting. Let's start with what it means to be diagnosed at ad adulthood. Did you have any signs as a child that your parents missed or did the signs start exhibiting, you know, as an adult? Um, when you're autistic, you're always autistic. You're born autistic. Okay. But often, if you're a girl and you're autistic, a lot of your signs are missed because they might be looking for more typical male presentation of autism. Mm. So they might be looking for a boy who loves trains, but a girl might like a boy band or she might be really interested in how other people work. So the traits like maybe a hyperfixation on a particular subject might be more socially acceptable and it might not be flagged. But also there's also a really critical element that we must talk about, which is masking. So women tend to mask a lot. And you see this with autistic girls, too. They start internalizing their symptoms. So that might manifest itself instead of as anxiety. Or they might say she's very emotional or hysterical when she maybe doesn't like dirt or she doesn't like certain sensory textures or certain things. But those things get misdiagnosed rather than being pointed at as autism. That, do, you so, think, do you think maybe that's why we are having more girls diagnosed with autism because we are discovering them at a later age? Yeah, most definitely. That's exactly it. I think we're getting more girls diagnosed now in their adulthood rather than when they're younger because we're missing the, they're missing the signs of it because it's the internalized traits and masking. And now we're more aware of it as people get older and they're able to verbalize and explain. We're now being able to pick it up and they're getting the adequate diagnosis, but also adequate support that comes with it, hopefully. Ayo, I would love to hear about your experience. You are a young woman. You used to be a girl. You have been diagnosed as a young adult. How did it feel? For me, it was so... I think it was one of those moments that was both positive and negative because I kept thinking to myself, imagine if I'd been diagnosed younger and I'd had the support I needed and people really being aware of my needs and catering to them. But then in that moment, I was able to feel great. I now know why. Because a lot of people, they feel the different. They know something's different about them. But having the term, the word to put to it is quite healing. So to me, it was the start of that journey of saying, OK, I know who I am, but I'm not going to let anything stop me. I'm about to go and do everything I want to do and achieve all the things I want to achieve. And you so obviously that... <laughs> sound like a go-getter. That is very clear. But would you say that um, this 
being autistic has been at some point um, an obstacle to reach your goal? I think I've had to maybe approach things differently. Autism is a communication and social difference. And that means I see and experience the world very differently from other people. And that can be a challenge when people are expecting you to show up like they do in a neurotypical mm. way, which means like, I guess what they would think the normal way. And that can be challenging. But what I've learned and I've used a lot in my life has been coaching methodologies to try and find out how do I achieve the goal I want. Now, it doesn't mean there are barriers, yeah. but what are the options that are presented to me that maybe I can use to navigate a challenging space? Mm -hmm. And therefore, I've been able to use that and still achieve things I really want to. Mm. I've become the fastest chartered engineer. I've done, you know, wow. I've been elected. I've been I'm an actress. I'm wow. a presenter. I need to do all the things I want to do <sighs> because... I do acknowledge that this does make me different and maybe yes, the world is... Yes, that's very impressive. Uh, Ayo, you I are, you are <laughs> such a breath of fresh air, you know. <laughs> you know, and I love the way you put it about how uh, the lens of looking at autism in young girls and women is less obvious or less looked for than in men or boys. That's a very interesting point. And that is really why... Uh, here at Our Voices, we emphasize the woman's lens on things because some of these things are missed. But I wanted to know, um, you know, once you found out that you had uh, autism, what kind of help did you get and how did that contribute to where you are today? Which is really exactly what happens when we find out um, that we have something as women and we take care of it. Yeah, I think the key thing is the one challenge being diagnosed much later in life is that there's less built in support. Mm -hmm. If you're diagnosed when you're in education, your teachers will help you. You might get support um, aid who helps you. But the later you're diagnosed, there's less of that actual support. So I had to find that support for myself. And that meant talking to my mom, my siblings, but also, you know, reading books. And the books I found were coaching books. Book, books on how to realize your potential wow. and as an autistic person that became my special interest wow. something wow. I'm utterly obsessed with self-development becoming your best self realizing your potential mm. and doing that I've mm. seen has actually helped me achieve time and time again mm -hmm. and now I share this with everyone else because I want everyone to achieve and be their best self regardless of if they're autistic if they have any other disabilities and I talk about coaching and I've well, designed a coaching you. app just Thank you so that. much, well. uh, Ayo. And we are very lucky that you agreed to share that with uh, the rest of the world. And I'm so happy for Africa right now. Thank you for sharing your personal experience. We have more questions for you. We will continue our conversation on helping children with autism grow in productive young adults. When we come back, we will continue to speaking with you, Ayo. Uh, if you just joined the show, Ayo, was diagnosed with autism later in her life, but she managed to, to be successful in STEM. We also love to hear from you. You know that on social platforms. We're on Facebook, Instagram, and X, and our handle is at VOA Africa. Use the hashtag VOA Our Voices. We'll be right back. Times of change, when the world seems uncertain, and what we hear doesn't reflect what we see, we seek the truth. When we are told only part of the story, we lose trust. In moments of crisis, our dreams, hopes, and wishes for a better tomorrow depend on a free press. At Voice of America, we bring you the stories that people take risks to see. We connect the world and unite it with truth. At Voice of America, we show you the whole picture. Health, wellness, sport, beauty, medical breakthroughs. Healthy Living cares about your well-being. What are the main health concerns in Africa and around the world? Find out the latest on coronavirus. 
Connect with our experts and ask them questions. How long does the virus stay? Join me, Lino Khmudu, in Washington every week on Healthy Living, right here on VOA. You're watching VOA's Red Carpet. My name is Jackson Vungani. Thank you so much for joining us each week right here on Red Carpet. We bring you the latest in... <laughs> Welcome back. You're watching Our Voices, and we're discussing how to combat misconceptions around autism and embrace success. Before we go to that, uh, we are still with Ayo Sokale in a minute, uh, who is also going to tell us more about what success means for autistic women. Let us first go on the continent and listen to women uh, who, and about how they feel about autism and what kind of support families need. Uh, our viewer reporter Edmund talked to women in, and men in Dar es Salaam, Tanzania. Uh, we have Fadili Fadili, Bertha Asantel, Hussein Bakari, Nuru James, and Kevin Charles Napanjele in our Your Voice segment. You are born with a disease. After some years, the condition can go down, depending on an individual. But for others, it stays the same forever. In my view, there are two stages. There are those with moderate habits, and there are those who face more challenges. I am a mother of three children, and one of them has autism. Children with autism or a person with the same condition may not display the same characteristics. People are affected differently. Some may be affected by eating, talking, or physical sensations. The important thing to know is that an autistic child can't look you in the eye so you can communicate better. Sometimes the child has to look at another person's lips so he or she can express his needs. What can be done for people with these kind of diseases? I think the government should intervene so that we can get health professionals working with NGOs who will do research to prevent more children being born with these kind of conditions. I'm talking about an experience with my son who has autism. He is three years old right now. First, I thought my son is super active because he had a hard time going to sleep. And the doctor said the child is super active. He can't calm down in one place. For example, he opens the fridge, throws pillows off couches, and cries all at the same time. I also noticed that he had difficulty speaking. Autism is a disease that makes one have poor memory, unable to talk, and sometimes fail to make decisions without help. The society should not isolate such people. Society should treat them the same as other healthy children and involve them in their work done within the community. Thank you so much for people of Dar es Salaam for sharing their experience and their thoughts on this top topic. Let's go back to Ayo Sokali. She's a chartered civil engineer who has masters in civil and coastal engineering from Playmores University. She also is a dancer, a singer, um, a talented a artist. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, when, when we talk about success, let, let's understand what this success means or what success looks like for, you know, children with autism. Does it vary across the spectrum? I mean, when they say you've met an autistic person, they always say you've met one autistic person because autism manifests itself very differently for each person. So it's important to consider the individual element of it. But one of the things I think it's really important when we talk about success for autistic people is being able to flourish in your own terms, like in your own way. I believe that everyone has strength and something they're good at. And I think autism can be another way of viewing the world. And it's not a negative thing entirely in the way that often it's perceived in other people's misconceptions of it. But we need space to flourish where we're considered and our needs are met. And that's the important thing. That's what can actually lead to real success. 
So it's mm. just being uh, doing diff things differently and you know having a different uh, outlook to how things work. And I think difference can be so beneficial. I talk about all the time amazing autistic people throughout history and even today. And you just think about the contributions they've made, their different perspective, autistic actors who are so creative and dynamic or autistic engineers who have this fantastic way of solving problems. Mm. And without them, we wouldn't be where we are today. Mm. So I think the world would be so much worse off without the autistic contribution. So that in itself, for success for all of society, it actually is about involving us, including us, and allowing us to do things the way we do them. Ayo, you were talking about contribution from autistic people. Your contribution to this show is such a relief, I think, mm -hmm. to all, all who are watching us all over the continent. And before we continue our conversation, let's also hear from Deborah Shebet, an occupational therapist in Kenya, who says occupa uh, occupational therapy is one of the tools to build skills for autistic children. She starts by defining autism, defining autism. We have defined it as a neurodevelopmental disorder there is no known cause of autism. And what I can just say is the use of therapeutic activities, the real activities to engage these children for them to be independent. Yes, that is all I can say from the view of an occupational therapy. So when we say um, success, uh, when we say that they have abilities, they can contribute, uh, I think employers also come into the picture. So uh, what do you say about um, inclusiveness in workplace and, you know, giving chance for people with autism, you know, to um, use their skills and uh, be productive? Absolutely. I think employers have a really huge part to play in this, in this journey of inclusion and inclusion autistic minds. We just have to look at one autistic person in the UK um, during World War II. It was um, Alan Turin. He was this great mathematician who solved the Enigma code. And that shortened World War II by two years, saving 14 million lives. But when you think about the way he recruited his team, it was so unconventional. Mm -hmm. And I think when you look at recruitment now, often there are a lot of barriers in the way that wouldn't necessarily suit someone with a communication or social difference. But yet that person could be an Alan Turing. They could be a great engineer. They could be a great mind that could contribute to your organization and make huge difference and strides in innovation. Because there's so much research that says autistic minds are often systemizing minds. So they're the mind of innovators, the people mm -hmm. who see a problem and solve it. Right. And, and they tend to be they're fixated. So they're actually going to do the work and get really in a tunnel and want to make it work. Uh -huh. So we have to find a way of actually removing barriers to entry for those people to join the workplace. And when they're in the workplace, we have to consider how we can make the workplace more inclusive, right. be it maybe it's quieter or they can have, you know, less bright lighting and mm. so that the sensory elements are considered, but they can still be in the workplace and still contribute. That's great. That's great uh, uh, advocacy. Now, are you, I know, let's go back to a little bit to the, the symptoms and how you deal with day-to-day -day life. Um, one of the things that I saw in the research is that uh, autistic people, they need the time to debrief and really just uh, come from an environment of a lot of stimulation and just debrief, uh, you know, because it's just too much for them. Have you experienced that? Is that some of the things that you go through that you need as people with autism? You need the time to just debrief from being around a lot of people, a lot of activities and a lot of those things. So in terms of day to day life, how is it? Yeah, I mean, I love doing lots of different things and lots of different activities, but I, I have to be aware that I'm autistic and at the end of the day, I have X amount of capacity to spend a lot of time in high stimuli environments. So I have to be aware of that and I build in space in my diary. So, for example, yesterday I was traveling to go speak to this incredible organization. But on the way back, the train journey, I was already getting overstimulated. I could feel the seams of my dress, my tights. I could feel every, the lights were too bright. Everything was discombobulating and uncomfortable. So I knew that I had to take steps to calm down and to give myself the space to decompress. Mm -hmm. So when I go home, it's a dark room. It's a weighted blanket. It's silence and giving myself that time. But I... If you were to see me early in the day, you would only see that high performance. And that's why we often talk about the, the high masking element, because you can do these things, but you just need to create the space as well to 
allow Very yourself good. to do that. Being aware of yourself and, and the amount of capacity and amount of performance that you can put out. That's very good. Okay. Ayo, I would like to touch on a subject we haven't touched yet. Romantic life. <laughs> you seem so at e you're gorgeous, you're young. I guess you don't have children yet. Maybe you haven't even been married yet. I don't even know. Maybe are you engaged now? <laughs> no. <laughs> so what advice would you give young women like you who are aut autistic, who know they are, when to disclose um, mm. their autism? How, how to share about it, how to talk about it, and at what moment? This is, I think, an individual thing because it's quite a challenging one. When do you choose to disclose? Even in the workplace, wherever you are, it's quite a charged one because you know it might change people's perceptions because when people have heard of autism before they've heard of maybe something that's very different from your manifestation of autism or maybe they've heard about an autism that you don't even like you don't recognize as something that you experience because there's quite a narrow representation in the media of what autism is but everyone who's autistic is very different yeah so that can be quite challenging so for me i chose to disclose to my current partner when we were I think on our fourth date um, but I think it's about feeling that safeness and knowing that that person's trustworthy mm. and that can be quite challenging if you're autistic because we tend to say what we mean which is great because we're always quite honest but um the key challenge is realizing not everyone else is so you have to I pay think, more I think I think honesty is always key and uh, that's a good tip to end this show with and special thanks uh, goes to Ayo Sokale, civil engineer, dancer, um, you know, um, an artist. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. It's been a Thank you so much. Be sure to watch our voices on VOA website at voaafrica.com or on, on our YouTube channel where you can catch up on the latest episode and the world's top news stories. Last but not least, we thank our editorial and production team on our voices. We'll see you again next week with another exciting topic. Be sure to continue the conversation on our social media platforms. Until then, thanks for watching.